surf this. Hey guys, welcome back to Clash with Corey. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, check out the details of my videos when you get a chance. I've got a lot of great resources for you in there. I got a link to my Discord server if you want to hang out with me. Uh, if you have any questions, I, I answer questions a lot in there, definitely. And, uh, you know, I've also got links to WHF's live streamers if you're interested in watching WHF Wars live, go ahead and give our live streamers a follow. You'll get a notification when, when they're streaming a live war and you can see the action as it happens. Also got links to WHF's recruiting Discord server. If you want to join the WHF family, go ahead and check out that link. You're going to see all the requirements you need, what, what you need to do before you apply. And then uh, I've actually got a video that just came out to check you out to help you out with that process and after you apply as well. So hope to see you in WHF's recruiting Discord server. With that, I'm going to get into today's video. It is... Not today's video. I've already done another video today, but I'm going to get into this video. And uh, this is, you know, like a lot of my videos, requests from comments. Hey, man, can you do another Town Hall 11 video? All right, man, sure. I'll keep an eye out and we'll do it. So I'm going to do a base identification video. Just going to have three attacks in there and uh, make sure to grab a variety of different attacks. And uh, we're in WHF 2 for this one. We're going to take a look at Lincoln Logs. Fresh E drag hit on number eight, and we're gonna see, we're gonna see if we can identify what he was seeing in this base to make him think electro drag. So let's take a look. So first thing he's gonna do is he's gonna take out this whole compartment right here, most of it, with a blimp and a rage. Since this is a fresh hit, he's not sure what's in that CC, so he's got an option to go ahead and deal with it with heroes if it's air targeting. If it's a hound and a loon, since he's coming in with air troops, it's not even going to pop out. He's not going to have to deal with it at all, so really good job of, of, you know, since it's a fresh base and not knowing what's in there, having a plan for it either way. If it's a hound, he's got a plan. If it's a damage CC that can target air, he's got a plan for that too, so he's going to take this section out with that blimp and with full of max loons and a rage. And then he's able to come back in and kind of clean up this area. The trash building's left with like a baby dragon or something, or heroes. Actually, I think he uses heroes this time. Go ahead and clear this out so that we're left with this nice path. He's got a lot of DPS over here, but man, it's a nice path. Look how close these buildings are. Remember, if buildings are like one tile apart, I believe, then that, that chain uh, lightning from the E-drags really can target quite a few of them at once. So if you get a bunch of buildings in a nice path here that are that close, those E-drags should, in theory, be able to take out a ton of those with those chains sometimes even before they're able to be targeted so let's go ahead and take a look at how he gets through this one. Oh, and another thing to consider is sweepers he's you know he's going to be fighting maybe this sweeper a little bit but he's got a rage plenty of rages to get through that section and uh, he's got four freezes as well so the freeze is going to help him deal with sweepers help him deal with air defenses and help him deal with these single target infernos because those are all big threats to e-drags they're really slow and of course they're air troops so any of the things that are going to do a ton of damage to air troops and uh you know he can address those with those freeze spells so he does end up having a damage CC that can target air. We've got a minion, we've got a witch, we've got a big dragon in there, and an archer. So his entire CC looks like can target air troops. That's fine. He had a plan for that. Going to tank him with his king and kill them with his queen. He elected not to bring a poison here. Oh, I don't know. You know, I guess he just figured the freeze was going to be worth a lot more than, than a poison to help CC, which is fine. There's really not any CCs that both of your heroes can't kill. No problem. As long as you get that king tanking out in front. Sure enough, he's got a baby dragon that helped with that CC kill and is also helping funnel those buildings. So just like we said, we got rid of a lot of the stuff in here and we've got this nice path left over for the E-drags to come in. Now, he actually dropped some loons before his E-drags. Normally, dragons or whatever, you want to drop them behind. But with, I think what he's trying to do there is clear any potential black bombs that could do a ton of damage to his E-drags. And if you can soak those up with some loons instead, uh, you know, sacrifice a loon or two to save an E-drag or two, that's huge value. Excellent value there. So he's got the freeze down on the eagle, the sweeper, and the enemy queen. Huge value from that freeze there. Continuing to use those rage spells in, in areas where he really needs to get those buildings taken out. The queen actually went inside this little trough right here, this base, and took out the eagle artillery. She's still in there doing some work and still has her ability to pop as well. Man, it's so hard to tell when these E-drag hits are going good because it'll look like they're kind of dying out. And then you get a few of them in a rage and they just take out a huge chunk of the base all at once and the tide turns. 
Look at that. So they did kind of fan out a little bit. Uh, you know, I think he was trying to keep in there a little bit more, but they're going to be able to come back in and target this last section just fine. And once again, we got these buildings are super close. So these, these look at these chain lightnings are going to be able to target a ton of them at once. Wow, look at that. And, uh, you know, just coming to this last section, a ton of electro drags left up. And got two freezes left for this section. Uses the first one on that single target Inferno. And, and then he's going to bring the second one down once again on the single target Inferno, most importantly. But also manages to catch an Archer Tower with it. Just like that, this base is wrecked. He's still got his queen up. He's still got his warden up. He's still got five electro drags up. This base is crushed hard. Obviously did a good job of, of you know, identifying a base that was going to be weak to electro drags because of the pathing he was able to create and also because how close those buildings were together. Got huge value from those chain lightning reactions there. So now we're going to take a look at Sky's hit on number nine. So this is a cleanup attack. So Sky's got the benefit of knowing what's in this CC. And since she knows what's in that CC, she's able to bring in a kill squad and get some really good value. Let's take a look at this. So look how deep in this king and queen are in the, on the back side of this base. So you got to get through a lot of stuff, a lot of DPS to get back there. But you don't necessarily have to get to their compartment. If you get to this compartment next door, the queen's going to be targeting them. The king's going to jump over the wall. So if you can get into this compartment with your kill squad, chances are you can get both of those heroes taken out. And that's exactly what Sky's going to do on this hit. With a Town Hall 11, if you send your warden in with your kill squad and take advantage of that eternal tome ability that makes them invincible during the time when they're taking the most damage, that really allows Town Hall 11s to get some excellent, excellent, really deep kill squad pushes. And Sky's going to show us just, just a really good example of doing that. And you notice, uh, you know, aside from getting in and taking out both those heroes, if you can take out this whole section, you're going to take out the eagle. You're obviously going to take out the enemy CC during that as well. And you're going to leave a pretty nice little L-shaped path around the rest of this base. And uh, she's going to choose to use hogs for the back end of this one. Since she's taken out both of these heroes with this kill squad, hogs are an excellent choice. So once again, like I said, going to use just... Just rage, really, and, uh, you know, poison to get through the enemy CC, and that Warden's Eternal Tome ability to get an excellent push, and those heroes are still in there doing excellent work. The King is just now going down. The Queen still has her ability, so she's going to be able to reach over those walls and take out even more defenses, which is huge. I'm going to pause it because I'm way behind on the attack. Already got, got her hogs in. You don't want to wait until your kill squad's all the way done getting value. If you can bring in your hogs before your Queen's really getting targeted, as long as you got that pathing established, you got the heroes down, got the enemy cc down go ahead and bring in those hogs because they're going to do a little bit of tanking for your queen at the same time that she's reaching over taking out defenses she's going to take out this expo she's going to take out a grand warden tower aside from taking out those extra defenses which is obviously good value that also limits the number of traps that your hogs are going to hit because they don't have to path those extra defenses they don't have to pass through those potential trap locations as well and you know Traps are a huge threat to hogs, big time. Spring traps, giant bombs, uh, they can really do a number on a big pack of hogs. So anytime you're able to get extra value out of your queen, wow, she's going to pop her queen and get that other single target Inferno as well. Huge value from that kill squad there. And, you know, that just goes to show if you're sending in your warden, bringing in, you know, a decent sized kill squad, you can get a huge push on Town Hall 11's base if you do it right. Really leaving... You know, not much of the base left to get through for these hogs. She's got, she's got this base covered. Had a skelly spell in the comp there, just kind of for utility. Uh, you know, maybe for for cleanup if she needed it, or she actually used it right in front of her queen to tank it for those last couple defenses. Just make sure her queen stayed alive, because the queen's really good at doing cleanup. She can chew through those storages really fast, because she does a ton of damage. Excellent cleanup troop the queen is. So she's going to go ahead and swag a poison on this. Doesn't look like there's really any skelly traps in the base uh, to deal with, so it didn't end up needing it. I'm just going to forward, fast forward through the rest of it. And, uh, God, look at all those hogs left. Sky crushes this base. Excellent job of base identification there. No one, she can get the pathing. She can get both heroes. She can get a ton of value, ton of defenses taken out, including the Eagle Artillery and the enemy CC out, and just hog the last resulting path. Great job identifying what could get it done on that base there. So now we're going to take a look at Timmy Sui Lalo on number 10. Like I told you, I tried to bring you a wide variety of attacks so that maybe maybe we cover the attack that, you know, that's your favorite. Maybe you're an air guy. Maybe you're a ground guy. Maybe you like, uh, you know, 
you know, maybe like e-drags. I don't know. So we're trying to cover a bit of, a bit of variety. So look at this base right here. This is a cleanup hit as well. So he knows that there's a hound in that enemy CC. If you use air troops, you don't have to deal with that hound. All right. And also, we're going to notice that queen is super exposed. I don't know what this guy was thinking. Gives him... <coughs> <coughs> Oh, excuse my coughing. Once again, still trying to get rid of the cough from pneumonia. It sucks. Anyways, this queen is super exposed. She hops over that wall on, all on her own. He's going to be able to kill her just with a king-queen trade really easily. So, and then once he gets some value from, you know, those heroes in there, he's just going to take advantage of the fact that there's no freaking troops in that CC that can target air and uh, going to be able to bring a ton of loons, three hounds, and a ton of spell support to get this base taken care of. So it kind of delays his queen a little bit. Uh, wow, gets right behind kind of the troops right there and just really starts in on the Lalo. Goes really heavy on those first deployments right there. Going to go in heavy with spells behind, speed them in there. Has to pop the Warden ability, place him in kind of an unfortunate spot. He gets targeted by that single target Inferno immediately. Ideally, those loons would have done some tanking for that first. That's unfortunate, but... Uh, you know, it does get to at least pop the ability and catch some of the loons in there. Get a little bit of value out of that. The moral, this, the moral of this attack here is just a lot of freaking loons and hounds with a lot of hastes and rages to speed them through. So, starting to run out of spells here. Got a heal down on that last wizard tower compartment. He's got a lot of loons left up. Uh, he's got some defenses to make it through too. No hastes left at this point. So uh, he's going to go ahead and take advantage of those free spells for maximum value since he doesn't have any haste left over. So kind of coming to this last section, he chooses to freeze that single target inferno and the archer tower. If it had been me, I don't know, I might have chose to freeze that expo instead, but who knows, maybe nowadays the Archer Tower is doing more damage than the Expos. I'm not really sure. Anyways, get some good value there. Freezing two of those defenses at a time. And that gives that pack of loons plenty of, plenty of room, plenty of time to get in there and get this base taken care of. Just really overwhelms it. You know, I don't know, it's kind of a Spam Lalo attack. Nothing wrong with Spam Lalo, especially if you got a, a whole base to take care of. But it wasn't really a Spam deployment. He had definite groups of loons going in there. And, uh, of course, that Hound pathing is already, already you know, carefully thought about before this attack even goes in. But basically on this one, he's taking advantage of the fact that it has a Hound and a Loon in the CC, so he doesn't have to deal with that enemy CC at all. He's also going to take advantage of the fact that that Queen was super exposed. Really easy Queen kill there. You know, if you can get the Queen killed, it makes your Lalo simpler. Sure, you can kill her on a Lalo with skelly spells and rage but that's not always a sure thing even for highly skilled attackers sometimes sometimes she just freaking jumps another wall when she shouldn't and you miss that queen kill and it can really ruin your whole raid so it can be dumb but if you can kill the queen before your lalo it definitely makes things easier definitely makes it a lot simpler for the rest of the attack so i hope you guys like the video and i'll see you in the next one nerf this